Greetings everybody, Dr. Frank here with a quick um, training bulletin, uh, training video regarding a new uh, protocol. Uh, we don't have a number for the protocol yet, but the protocol is anaphylactic, um, I'm sorry, prophylactic antibiotics for open fractures and severe uh, soft tissue injury. The idea behind the protocol is that we know from the literature that the earlier you get antibiotics, appropriate antibiotics on board uh, for people with open fracture, uh, the better they do in the long run, uh, the less uh, morbidity and mortality they have. Uh, and so what I want to do, uh, based on the literature, based on evidence-based medicine, is um, incorporate a protocol that allows us to give appropriate antibiotics as early as possible. The hospitals do a tremendous job um, of getting antibiotics on board early, but if we can do that 30 minutes, 20 minutes, you know, uh, sooner, um, th that's better for the patient and better for the whole system. So uh, I'm just going to go over it quickly. We'll obviously put it out there. You can read it before it goes live. Uh, but you're going to initiate as, you know, your regular uh, trauma protocol, uh, hemorrhage control, airway, breathing, circulation. And then later on in the secondary survey, um, if you recognize an open fracture, um, you'll give uh, the antibiotic, which is cefazolin, uh, also known as ANCEF, you'll give two grams intravenously. And very important to note, you know, this is not going to delay transport. You can give this on the way to the hospital after you start your IV. Um, you can give this right when you show up to the hospital, um, before you transfer care, you know, uh, t before you take the patient out of the ambulance. But a very, very key, uh, key point is to not allow this to delay care. So I don't want to see people, you know, staying on scene to get IV access to give cefazolin um, before you transport. This is something that uh, we're going to get on board early, uh, but very important not to delay transport. So the indication um, for cefazolin is, again, it's two grams IV, and we'll be able to go over how to, how to mix, it, mix it and so forth. Um, but it's for an open fracture that you identify, so the bone's sticking out of the skin and it's pretty obvious, or that you suspect. And what I mean by suspect is that sometimes there's a fracture and there's like a little puncture wound that maybe the fracture uh, segment came out of and then went back in. Uh, but if there's a little puncture wound near that uh, fracture site, uh, you could say that you suspect um, an open fracture and you give this cefazolin two grams IV. Uh, and obviously if there's a, you know, an, open, an obvious open fracture, it's sort of uh, um, not hard to miss that. So uh, it's uh, indication number one is uh, identified or suspected open fracture. Um, indication number two is a gunshot wound to um, a single or multiple extremities. Uh, and the concept behind this is that we would assume that we can't necessarily predict whether there's a fracture underneath the gunshot wound. So in theory, that's an open fracture. So a gunshot wound to any um, of the four extremities, you give the cefazolin two grams IV. Um, for now, we're gonna not do gunshot wounds to the chest or abdomen, because these will typically go to the operating room, get antibiotics, get washed out. Um, so just open fracture, uh, I'm sorry, gunshot wound to uh, one or more extremity. And then finally, uh, one that may be a little bit subjective is severe soft tissue injury. And what I mean by that is not, you know, a cut to the hand, uh, even a deep cut to the hand or anything like this. This is severe soft tissue injury. For example, somebody got dragged by a, a motor vehicle and they have severe um, you know, road rash and so forth. Uh, somebody got uh, their arm, you know, into some sort of a industrial machine that there's significant injury there. Uh, it's difficult for me to sit here and define what a severe soft tissue injury is. Um, I think probably uh, there's going to be a bit of a bell curve um, in terms of who thinks, you know, that somebody may think that a, a severe soft tissue injury is, is, you know, is, is, is found in a, in a person that somebody else may not. So it's going to be a little uh, subjective, uh, but, um, but the examples I just gave are really what, what, I, what I intend for the protocol to include. You know, somebody, again, that was, that was dragged and has, has significant uh, road rash, somebody who has a mangled extremity, maybe not, maybe there's no fracture there, uh, but has you know, significant injury to the soft tissue. Uh, the other day we had a propeller injury. Um, there was no bony involvement. Um, that would, you know, I think that would include uh, severe soft tissue injury. Uh, if there's ever a, a question or a doubt, obviously call for online medical control, um, but, uh, but use your judgment in terms of severe soft tissue injury.
Uh, con the only contraindication is known cephalosporin allergy. So cefazolin is a cephalosporin, and I'm gonna go over allergies, how they relate to penicillin allergies in a second. So contraindication known cephalosporin allergy. Uh, and what you do, like I said before, is you administer cefazolin two grams IV. Um, it's gonna be, need to be reconstituted, um, and we'll, uh, we'll uh, show you how to do that, not too difficult. Some pearls that are going to be in the protocol, I'm gonna go over mostly related to allergy. So number one, if the patient is allergic to penicillin and the reaction is anaphylaxis to penicillin, you do not um, administer cefazolin. Again, so the patient tells you, you know, I'm allergic to penicillin, my throat closed up, I needed to be intubated, I was in the ICU, something like this, you know, anaphylaxis to penicillin, you do not administer cefazolin. Um, and number two, if the, allergic, uh, if the patient is allergic to penicillin, but the reaction is not anaphylaxis, so in other words, they say they get a rash or they get diarrhea or upset stomach or something like this, it's perfectly fine. You administer cefazolin and you monitor for a reaction as you usually would. Like I said before, uh, cephalosporins are related to penicillins. Um, there's a very low cross-reactivity to them. Um, I'm going to pull up a study from the New England Journal right here um, while I talk and, um, and talk to you about the cross-reactivity and the, and the chance of reaction. And I'm, I'm going to read this to you. This is from New England Journal of Medicine Journal Watch. The frequency of cefazolin allergy in patients with self-reported allergy to penicillin is 0.6%. Uh, so we know um, that people do self-report a lot of penicillin allergy. You know, you'll hear that they were told as a child that they're allergic to penicillin. Um, there's literature out there that says this is not true. Most of these people are not allergic to penicillin. Um, so again, the frequency of cefazolin allergy in patients with self-reported penicillin allergy was 0.6%. Uh, and the frequency in patients with confirmed allergy, so this was verified by skin tests um, and so forth, the, uh, the, the frequency in patients with confirmed allergy is 3%. And so, you know, again, that's not to say that, they're all that they all get anaphylactic reactions, uh, but they do have a reaction. So again, the, the point is that if somebody says they're anaphylactic to penicillin, just for safety measures, we'll hold off on giving cefazolin. If they have a reaction to penicillins and they don't know what it is, or it's, you know, uh, not a severe reaction, it's perfectly fine to give and we'll go ahead and give it. Um, this is, um, cefazolin is a first generation, generation cephalosporin, and as you go on in higher generations of cephalosporin, so cefazolin is a first generation, you may know of something called ceftriaxone or um, rocephin, um, is a third generation cephalosporin. So as you go on in later generations, the cross-reactivity to penicillin is less and less. But just keep in mind that, cef that uh, cefazolin is a first-generation cephalosporin, um, and I discussed already the, the chance of cross-reactivity with penicillin, pen penicillin allergy. Um, so next pearl, if the patient's unresponsive, unable to give a history, uh, you can administer cefazolin. And we'll, uh, we'll manage uh, if, you know, the, the low likelihood of anaphylaxis or severe allergic reaction, we'll manage that as we normally would. Um, you know, most likely if they're a trauma patient and they're unresponsive, they're gonna, they're gonna be intubated. Um, and that's the main concern with anaphylaxis um, is the airway. So if they're unresponsive, unable to provide an allergy history, you can give cefazolin. Uh, it's safe to use in pregnancy, so don't worry about uh, if a pregnant person has an open fracture. And again, the final pearl, do not delay scene time to administer cefazolin. Uh, you can give it en route to the hospital, no problem. Um, we're going to have a pediatric specific protocol for this too. Um, you'll refer to hands heavy. Um, it'll be weight based uh, as everything else is. Um, and uh, as a reminder, pediatric open fractures um, are to go to the pediatric trauma center um, and not to Sarasota Memorial. The reason behind that is not is is that the, the, they can take care of the open fracture at Sarasota Memorial. But the concern is, is that whether the patient has an, un, an underlying other injury. So, you know, to have an open fracture is a pretty significant mechanism of injury, pretty uh, high energy transfer. And the concern is that this, the, the pediatric patient has an open fracture. It's managed, you know, by the orthopedist, but, he, but the pediatric patient's sitting on a pediatric floor. 
uh, and there's no ICU here uh, at SMH. So they're sitting on a pediatric floor. Let's say there was a missed injury, a splenic laceration or a liver laceration that was missed um, and the patient decompensates. There's nothing um, really for them to have operated on at, at SMH and they'll need to be transferred emergently. So the idea is that there's a high mechanism of energy transfer that these kids should go to a pediatric trauma center uh, capable of, um, of managing uh, intra-abdominal injuries um, so that they're not brought to a hospital that can't. But uh, anyhow, so the, the protocol is for open fractures and the idea is to get the antibiotics on board um, as early as possible uh, with, the, with, the, with the downstream plan or the downstream effect being a reduction of infection, reduction of morbidity, morbidity and mortality. Um, again, please don't um, let that delay your transport or uh, initiation of transport. And if you have any questions, please reach out to your EMS captains and we'll clarify that. Thank you very much for your time. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Captain Dunham, EMS-1 C-Shift. Um, I want to go over the cefazolin kits that we're going to be putting out soon for our um, fractures and significant soft tissue injuries. I know that Dr. Frank and Captain Smith put a video out already for its use and when. Today's just to familiarize yourself with what the kits are going to have in them. So the kits will consist and come in a package that's already sealed, and it's going to come with two vials of sterile water, and it's gonna have two vials of the cefazolin powdered solution. And so just like any reconstituted solution, we have to put fluid into the vial in order to deliver it intravenously. So we are gonna have two of the antibiotics, you're gonna have two of the waters, you're gonna have two syringes, and you're gonna have two needless adapters because the adult dose is two grams, each vial is one gram each. So you will give everything in the kit needed to treat one patient. So basically we're gonna do what we would always do in a reconstituting situation, and that we're gonna take our 10 cc syringe, it's 10 cc's of sterile water, so we want to make sure that we draw up our 10 cc's of water. And then we're going to inject it into the powdery substance. We want to make sure we inject all 10 cc's of fluid. Once all 10 cc's are injected into the vial, you want to agitate it until it comes out to a clear solution. Sometimes it may have a yellow tint to it. If so, that's perfectly acceptable. That doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with the product. Just sometimes it comes out clearer. Sometimes it has a little yellowish tint to it, which is perfectly fine. And then what you'll end up doing is then drawing all of this solution back up into your syringe. Once you have the 10 cc's back into the syringe, then you'll go ahead and inject it into the patient intravenously. And the thing is you wanna do it slow and controlled over about two minutes. And you wanna make sure that you give an adult patient both doses per kit, because that's gonna give them the two grams that we want them to have prior to arrival at the hospital. If you have any questions, contact your EMS captain or Captain Smith. Thanks, have a great day.